many people dream big dreams, but they never take any action. If you don't believe in yourself, you've already lost the battle. Not believing in yourself is a losing battle because either you won't try at all or you will convince yourself that you can't do it. And when you convince yourself that you can't do it, your results are going to confirm what you believe. So we are afraid to fail. Why? I told you, man. She didn't even try it, man. Just chill out, relax. Why are you so crazy? Why are you so obsessed? So all that stuff drives the uh, quitting mind, I call it. The mind wants to quit. The mind is tired. The mind thinks it's very deserving. So the biggest problem in this world is other people, not yourself. It's other people in your head. They are puppet mastering you pretty much on your life. I dare you to give up everything that is keeping you from your dream, to say no to all the negative influences. I dare you to pick up a book instead of a drink. I dare you to work harder than you think you did yesterday. I dare you to prove them wrong. I dare you to prove yourself right. You must be yourself if you want to experience your true purpose in life. If you're different, be different. Be different and do it with pride. If someone doesn't like it, if many people don't like it, who cares? Your life would feel better and richer if you had a goal. You chase that goal, you accomplish some things, and you would get this boost of confidence, you'd get this boost of self-esteem, like whatever it is that you're into doing. The time has come for you to understand that you cannot depend on the opinions of others. You cannot just trust in the opinions of others. You cannot allow other people to validate you because you are just who you are. Nobody is going to be like you. You are the author of your autobiography. You write the story of your life. No one can write your financial story. No one can write your spiritual story. No one can write your emotional story but you. The pen has always been in your hand. The pen has always been in your hand. I say write a story that's going to be damn good to read. But don't let yourself be vulnerable to weakness. Don't let weakness consume you. Don't let hopelessness consume you. Be about your business. Understand that you got to keep living and living strong. When nobody's looking, when nobody's watching, when nobody understands the measure of passion that you carry, can you keep going? Don't stop! You're right there! Find something. Find a thing that you genuinely enjoy because getting good at things you genuinely enjoy is extremely beneficial for young people because it lets you know that, like, everybody thinks they're a loser. Every young person thinks they're a loser, at least a young person in the situation I was at. I, I didn't know I wasn't a loser until I started winning, until I started doing martial arts. Martial arts taught me that, like, I could get better at stuff, that it wasn't, I wasn't really a loser. I just was someone who was like in a fucked up situation. But you could channel all that energy that you have as a young person into something and get better at it. And then all of a sudden people admired me. I was like, this is crazy. So I went from being someone who was incredibly insecure and basically a failure to someone who was really successful at this one thing that was very dangerous that other people were scared of. And that gave me immense confidence and also a real understanding of the direct correlation between hard work and success. And a kind of understanding that you're not a loser. Right. That there is some a diamond in the rough. Yeah, and also an understanding that you can't listen to people. Because even my parents didn't want me to do martial arts. They didn't want me to fight. They didn't want me to do stand-up. There's like, you, you have to understand like who you are and then in the face of other people's either criticism or, you know, lack of faith in your ability to succeed, you push through and there's great benefit in that. And then you realize that, that you can kind of apply that to other things in life. You can apply that to critics, you can apply that to social media commentators, you can apply that to a lot of things. I don't think people are happy if they don't have 
puzzles and complex tasks and things that are interesting to them, whether it's an art project or whether it's uh, learning something completely new like stand-up comedy. Like, doing things that are difficult is, it, it, it's as much of a nourishment of the mind as uh, food is a nourishment of the body. I think you need things that, that are puzzling to you, where you have to find your own human potential in the difficulty of the task and, and work your way through things, at least for me. For me, I mean, I can only speak for me because I'm, I'm the only life that I've ever lived that I'm aware of. And in my life, that has been 100% uh, constant. I, I am a very happy person, and I have never had a moment where I'm not doing difficult. Yeah, ever. What I realized is for me to become the man I wanted to become, I saw myself as the weakest person God ever created. But I never blamed God for anything he did to me. So I wanted to change that to be the hardest man ever created. Am I that? I don't know, but you had to have a goal. And my goal when I was sitting there, not going to school, being bullied, being having no self-esteem, my goal was the only person that's gonna turn this person around is me. The only way I can turn around is put myself through the worst things possible a human being can ever endure. And that'd be the only way that I can build this brain to handle anything that comes in front of it, callous in my mind, through pain and suffering. So we read a bunch of books nowadays. As, as humans, we, we want to find out how to be someone else. What we don't do is we don't go inside. So literally turn yourself inside out. Read the book that's in, like, like we're writing a book every day of the life, but we never read that book. So what I would challenge this young man or, or, or young woman to do is you have to look inside of yourself and see what you really want. What, what are you passionate about? We use these words and these little phrases of only the strong survive and all this other crap. They're all words. I get so tired of hearing people just talking. Like right now, someone may think God is just talking. <laughs> you don't know me. So when I speak, I speak from passion. I speak from experience. I, I, I speak from suffering. I have to tell this young man or woman that the only way I believe, this is just my experience in life, the only way you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey is you have got to suffer, to grow. To grow, you must suffer. And some people will get it, some people won't. But they have to see what their journey is to start their journey. Several people live to be 100 years old. And they have great lives, and they have great kids. The kids go to college and all sorts of stuff. But somewhere in their life, there was a point where they had a decision to make. They can go left or right on this path. Left was the easy route. Right was the hard route. A lot of people take the easy route. And they had a good life that way, but the better life was going to the right side. And you may have 20 years of pain and suffering to get past it, but a lot of us die never truly starting our journey. And I would tell this young person, you gotta start your journey. It may suck, but it will, it will come out the other side where you're coasting. Study the values you admire. You learn values by studying them closely. The law of concentration says that whatever you dwell upon grows and increases in your life. What this means is that when you study and read stories about men and women who demonstrated the kind of values that you admire and respect, and then think about those stories and that behavior, those values sink ever deeper into your mind. Once these values are programmed into your subconscious, they create a propensity within you to behave consistently with those values when the situation requires them. For example, in military training, soldiers are continually told stories of courage, obedience, discipline, and the importance of supporting their fellow soldiers. The more they hear these stories, discuss them, and think about them, the more likely they are to behave consistently with these values when they're under the pressure of actual combat. The core virtue of character is truth. Whenever you tell the truth, however inconvenient it may be at the time, you feel better about yourself and you earn the respect of the people around you. One of the highest accolades you can pay another person is to say that he or she always tells the truth. Emulate the people you most admire. Much of your character is determined by the people you most admire.
both living and dead. Who are they? Looking over your life and history, make a list of the people whom you most admire, and next to their names, write out the virtues or values that they most represent to you. If you could spend an afternoon with anyone, living or dead, what one person would you choose? Why would you choose that person? What would you talk about during your afternoon together? What questions would you ask, or what would you want to learn? Consider this as well. Why would that person want to spend an afternoon with you? What are the virtues and values that you have developed that make you a valuable and interesting person? What makes you special? Practice the values you respect. You develop values by practicing them whenever they are called for. As the Roman Stoic philosopher Epictetus said, circumstances do not make the man. They merely reveal him to himself. When a problem occurs, people tend to react automatically based on the highest values that they have developed up to that moment. We develop values by repetition, by behaving consistently with a particular value over and over again until it becomes a habit and locks in so that we come to practice it automatically. Men and women with highly developed characters behave in a manner consistent with their highest values and they do so without thought or hesitation. There is no question in their minds about whether or not they are doing the right thing.